Where in the Bible uh, do we read for us to trust people? Is anyone familiar with the passage or passages that say trust in people? First Corinthians 13 has something Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Sorry, that was a little bit of a setup. Would somebody read verse 5 and 6, please? How many would like to be uh, to live a pessimistic life? Sa uh, depressed. Depression. Uh, in despair. Does that how many that sounds very appealing? Sa It doesn't sound appealing at all. But if you read verse 5 and 6 that is exactly what the Bible says. Just someone let's read them. Yeah, please. Pra Jeremia mission now the antithesis is found in the next two verses. Please go ahead. Dota Në vitin e thatësirës nuk do të ketë asë një shqetsim dhe nuk dhe do të vazhdoj të mbaj fruta. Now the reason is given verse 9. Ani arsua pëse shdo në vargu 9, të thot, arsua është vargu 9, sepse, ose në falë, zemra është gënjështare mbi shdo gjë dhe e ligur keqë kush mund të njohë atë. And God knows our hearts. Dhe përëndia i një zemra tona. All right, so, uh, but how many of us have ever said, but I trusted you? Por sa për nesh kanë thënë, po, unë pata besim të këti. Sa për ju shë keni bërë. Yeah, we've all said that. Në okay. gjithë e kemi thënë këta. And, and what is our mindset as we say that? Uh, dhe qëfar po mendojmë kur e themi një, një gjithë tjil. But we say to another human being, but I trusted you. Por ne i themi një qenjë tjetha njërë zorë, po, unë pata besim të këti. We're disappointed. Yeah, we're disappointed. Ishim dhe shgënjërë. Now, uh, people leave churches because they're disappointed in God? Njërësët dhe largohen nga kisha sepse janë të shgënjurë nga përëndia. Where are their, where is their eye set? Ku i ka vendosë së sytë atë, ata? On men. Tek njërësët. And the Bible not once ever says for us to trust in man. Biblia në asë një rast të vetëm nuk thot që ne duhet kemë besim të këtë njëriju. Now when we get to parenting, Kur të shkrym të këpërinderimi, we'll find, uh, we'll see how the Bible presents children. Do të shkrym se si Biblia i paracet fëmijët. The children are manipulators. Që fëmijët janë manipuluas. Children are good at manipulating us. Fëmijët janë shumë manipuluas të mirë. And have you ever heard your child say to you, but you don't trust me? A keni gjuar në jefë mjënë, thot, po unë nuk, I don't trust you, right? Uh, you don't trust me. Po, në falë, ti nuk më ke besim të këmua. And every one of our four boys would say that to me. Edhe gjithë nga djemë të mi, të katër, do të më kanë thonë mua këtë gjë. And I would say exactly. Tamam, nuk kam besim të këti. All right. We don't trust people. Ne nuk kemi besim të njerëzit. And once again, the devil wants to bring our eyesight down to the horizon. Edhe djali do që të ullë sytan dhe të... And the Bible keeps wanting to, for us to look up. So in light of that, we're going to take a look at how marriage is a momentary living parable that is intended to reveal the, reveal the truths about God through the church. Yeah, this is session number four. Marriage is given to the church for the purpose of displaying God's manifold wisdom. Now, 
Man in glory on a cosmic scale në një shkall kosmike uh, to the watching angels which is mentioned twice in the New Testament ndaj angjeve që shikojnë që përmendën dy herë në dhjatën e re marriage is also a mystery that reveals the unity in God martesa është një mister që zbulon unitetin në perëndim the apostle Paul speaks in Ephesians 5 Apostoli Paul flet për këtët e Fisianu kapitulli 5 Metaphorically Në mënyrë metaforike Comparing Christ and the church Duk e krasuar kishën me, me, me Krishtin To the roles in marriage of a husband and a wife Duk e krasuar rolet në martes burë grua The one flesh union of a husband and a wife is a picture uh, Dhe në këtë tablo është uh, mashkimi në mi, një mishtë të vetëm të burit me gruan And that unity in Christ Edhe kjo është unitetin në Krishtin when we fulfill the duties of our roles in marriage, we are a living picture of the roles fulfilled by the Son to the Father. Dhe ne jemi një tablo e gjall e përmbushis e roli të birit në, në atin. Throughout uh, the Gospels in John 5 and John 8, Për gjatë ungjive të ungjili si pas Gjonit 5 dhe 6, We read how the Son submits to the Father's leading. Uh, ne shikojmë se si biri i nështrohe drejtimit të atit. So as we wives submit to our husbands, Ndërko që ne si bashkëshorte u nështrohim burave tanë, We are a reflection of, of Christ. Ne jemi reflektimi Krishtit. Now we need a gospel context in which to hear about this. Edhe ne kemi nevojë për një kontekst të ungjillit që ne ta dëgjojmë këtë. We won't submit perfectly as wives. Ne nuk do të nështrohemi në mënyrë përsosur si gra. And we can't have a self-righteous mindset of expecting our husbands to always lead us perfectly. Edhe nuk kemi nuk duhet të kemi atë qëndrimin e vetëdrejtësisë që ne presim që gjithmonë bashkohet të tanë do të drejtojnë në mënyrë të përsosur. We need that gospel interaction of grace and forgiveness to Ne kemi nevojë për ato ngjillin e hirit dhe në veprimit në jetën ton me në marrëdhënjen ton. So we've seen that the picture that our marriages give is one is for glory and unity and roles. Uh, në prakë kemi parë këtë ta, uh, që tablo e martesës, pra martesa kriston për të të uh, can you repeat again the three uh, glory, për lavdinë e perëndisë, unitetin and the roles. Edhe rolet që ne përmbushim në këtë në këtë Mr. Which Satan rebelled against in our world is rebelling against. Edhe ku Satani ka rebeluar dhe kjo bot në cilën ne jetojmë ka rebeluar ndaj autoritetit. And we will um, have separate um, times to talk about that more. Edhe, uh, dhe më vonë do të kemi ato takimet e ndara, burat veçan dhe krat veçan ku do të flasim më shumë për këta. And then fourthly, marriage displays God's covenant keeping love. Edhe gjithashtu së katërti, martesa shpallos dashurin e beslidhje së përëndis. And Malachi talks about the violence of divorce. Edhe të Malakia flet për atë uh, efektin shkatruës së divorcit. And when a, a wife doesn't love her husband, kur një grua nuk e do bashkortin e saj, she's promoting that violence. Ajo po promovon këtë lloj dhune. And that's the devastation of divorce. It misses the opportunity that God gives. Dhe kjo është shkatrimi që sjell divorcës u mbet atë arsyen kryesore që ka dhënë perëndia për martesën. Because we get to model his love. Dhe sepse ne modelojmë në fakt dashurinë e tij. The three aspects of God's love that the, New, that the Old Testament consistently speaks about. The three aspects of the vertetas që flet ose që jehoan në dhjatën e vjetën nga perëndia. Which we must reflect. Që ne duhet të reflektojmë. Is, is mercy and grace. Ësht mëshira dhe dhemshuria ose he, hiri. He is slow to anger. A jeshtë nga dalëshëm në zëmërim. And he is rich and abounding in steadfast, strong love. Edhe ishtë i pasu në mirësi dhe në besnikëri. Okay, once again, uh, for those that are married, how, how many have found that marriage is a sanctifying agent that God uses in our life? And it's going to either make us more like Christ or bitter. One of the two. You won't stay the same if you get married. But it is more about God's holiness than our happiness. And let me just take a moment to explain the difference. Now, God isn't this cosmic killjoy up in heaven.
heaven. Tani perëndia nuk është ky perëndia që do të vras uh, gëzimin e, nuk do më thënë ne gjë bëj çfarë do lloj gjë që ne mos jemi gëzuar. And that's the way the devil wants to pre- uh, present him. Edhe kështu është më kjo është mënyra se si djalli do ta paraqes perëndia. That you only God doesn't want you to have any fun. Perëndia nuk don as një lloj mënyrë që ti të kalosh mirë. He just wants you to sit on your hands and put a fake smile on. Edhe ai do që ti të ulesh edhe të kesh një fëtyrë kështu të të, të shtirur. No God is the inventor. Tani perëndia është shpikësi. But the difference between happiness and joy. Tani ndryshimi i lumturisë dhe gëzimit is happiness is circumstantial. Lumturia është e varur nga rrethanat. It's things that make us happy. Janë gjërat që na bën neve të lumtur. Joy is found in the Lord. Gëzimi gjendet në Zotin. Joy is not circumstantial. Gëzimi nuk varet nga rrethanat. If your joy is in the Lord, çose gëzimi juaj është në Zotin, and you have a brand new car out in the parking lot, çose ju keni një makinë krejt të re në 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 gar- aty përpara uh, gar- and you go out there and find that somebody has stru- struck their key against your car. You will not lose your joy. But if your happiness is found in that car, then you will be devastated. And you will be, have no joy. So we have to make sure that we understand that when our joy is in the Lord no one can rob us of our joy turn to someone next to you and tell them you can't rob me of my joy now four points here today people are seeking what they want individually now if you understand this the devil wants to make the church a bunch of little entities and we were having breakfast this morning and I looked at the coffee bar and everyone was sitting there on their phones it had nothing to do with conversation anymore. But the lie we believe is this. Oh no, I'm, I'm conversing with this person. Someone said to me the other day, they had nearly a thousand friends on Facebook. That's impressive, isn't it? I told them, tell them you're painting your house this weekend. <laughs> See how many show up. Biblically, marriage is about choosing to love another person. And fulfilling marriage and family and self-denial. Marriage is intended to grow you in mercy and grace. Unfailing love Martesa, uh, dështon, and treat, treating someone better than they deserve. Uh, Marriage is a training ground to make us more patient. Uh, vënd, Come on, you ladies. Oh, tani ju gra, vajza. How many haven't been all right, haven't grown in patience because of your husband? Uh, Say thank you to your husband. <laughs> Say thank you for growing my patience. I take great pleasure in growing Ruth's patience. <laughs> we should pray for Arta right now. <laughs> Number five. Those that are married must commit to steadfast, strong love. Not, be, not because the spouse loves him or her but because he is a conduit of God's love okay turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4 and if you study the different authors or the different writers with God the author they have different styles. Paul loves to ask rhetorical questions. Peter loves to make comparisons. 
Pietri uh, shumë i dhënë baskrasimeve. And John loves to play word games. Edhe nga ana tjetër Johni i pëlqen shumë të bëj lojra fjalës. And he's playing John is playing a word game in 1 John chapter 4. Edhe thë ke para Johni kapitulli 4, Johni po bën lojra me fjalë. But before we go there, por para sa çkem atje, let me ask you this question. Let me bëj unë një këtë pyetje. In Jesus first public sermon, në predikimin e parë që bërë Jezusi, Sermon on the Mount, të predikimin e Mal, he tells us that we're supposed to do something for our enemies. Ai na thotë që ne duhet bëjmë diçka për armisht tanë. Can anyone recall? Ana a mund ta mbaj më ndonjë nga ju se çfarë thotë Jezusi që duhet bëjmë për armisht tanë? Love our enemies. Yeah, love our do, love our enemies. Duam armisht tanë. How many say uh, uh, that's easy. Ë sa për ju thoni që është kollaj të duam armisht tanë? No, by a show of hands, how many say it's easy to love my enemies? Ana ngrini dorën dhe thoni që sa kollaj që është kollaj të duash armisht I find it easier to love my enemies with a rifle in my hand. We don't, we don't know how to love our enemies because we, we have learned, now get this please, we have learned relationships the way the world teaches. And therefore, the way Ruth treats me is the way I treat her. Now, if that's the case, Alright, if that's, if that's the case, what does this make Ruth? Ruth is the source of my love. Ruth is burimi da shuristime. And she dictates how I will treat her. She's good to me. I'm good to her. She plays with the bull. She's going to get the horn. Capish. Captone. So, Ruth is the source, then I am the object. Now, when we get to parenting, and I see the same thing here as I see in America. The children are running the society. And God forbid anyone would ever say anything against that. But God did say a lot about that. And so we'll address that. But for now, I want you to understand. This person right here thinks the world revolves around him. He is a selfish person. We would say in uh, America, narcissistic. Which just means that I believe that everyone has been placed on the world for my benefit. And you better treat me the way I want to be treated. Okay, so turn to the person next to you. And say, you better treat me the way I want you to. Or there's going to be trouble. Alright. How's that going to work? Isn't that great? Isn't that unity? Alright. First John chapter 4. The Apostle John uses some word games. He says, Beloved. So he's speaking to Christians. It's probably best to have your Bibles open to First John chapter 4. Unless you have it memorized. He says, Let us agapeo one another. The O on the end of agape makes it a, makes it a verb. And so it is the act of benefiting one another. He says, let us agapeo one another for agape love is of God. And everyone who agapeo 
is, is the child of God and is assured that they know God. How many want assurance that they know God? The Apostle John says you will find that as you love other people. And love being found in being beneficial to them. So verse 8 is the, the mirror. Verse 10? Uh, verse 8. He who does not agapeo does not know God. If you are a selfish person you will not be assured that you are a child of God. You will not have that assurance. You will not have the assurance from the Holy Spirit within your life that you are a child of God. Because love is of God. So in the biblical drawing, God is the source of love. Turn to someone and say, God is the source of love, not you. Now, verse 9. In this, the agape of God was manifested towards us that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Now, how do you know that God loves you? How do you know that God loves the person next to you? How do you know that? You just guessed? Or do you have any biblical backing? Or does it just sound good? Or a missionary said that to you once. And he looked honest. How do you know God loves you? John 3.16 John It's the same writer. Alright. God loves you. God loves the person next to you. God even loves Yoli. Because he sent his son. God so loved the world. That he gave. Now, young ladies, you should understand. There's a difference between lust and love. And the world is presenting lust as love. If a man ever says, If you love me, you will do this, or that, then he doesn't understand love. But love is all about giving, not getting. Okay, so we all agree that God is the source of love. And God loves this world through Jesus Christ. Everyone agree? Okay, all right, okay. Now, here, here's the 10 trillion lek question. Yeah, that's about maybe... Uh, 10 euros. <laughs> Just kidding. Right. Okay. How do you receive God's love? See, most people say obey. And, and that's our natural. Alright. But what does verse what does verse 10 say? Por çfar thot vargudhiet? Në këtë është dëshërie, jo se ne kemi dashur përëndin, por që ajna deshit ne dhe dërgoj birët i si shlyurje për mëkatët tona. There's one way that we receive God's love. Ka një mënyrë se si ne, vetëm një mënyrë se ne e marim dëshërin e përëndis. To become a Christian, të bësh i kryshter, the gospel, the good news, begins with bad news. 
And that bad news is that we are all sinners and that we deserve hell. Yes? Oh? Yes? Oh? Oh. So the way that I receive God's love is by confessing my sin. And as I confess my sin, God's love flows into me. Like an intravenous drip. Intervenous. Oh, never. Just God's love going flowing into us. Okay. Now, God is the source of love. God loves me through Jesus Christ. And because not everyone is going to heaven, like Rob Bell says. Because is everyone going to heaven? No, ja. it's the people who confess their need for a savior. Ja, because of that, his love flows to me. And this person becomes the source. I mean, excuse me, the, the object. And, the kuk, tu, kuk personi, but objekti and I become a, bëhem, a conduit. Like a big hose. Now, I'm just spreading whose love am I spreading? Whose love dashurin am I spreading? God's love. Did Jesus say love your enemy? Does this person have can they do anything to affect my love for them? No, because jo. they're not the source. Nuk janë now, continue on. Tani Look at verse 11. Once, once again, he, he, he emphasizes he's speaking to Christians. It's an if then. If God so loved us, we also ought to benevolence one another. Verse 12. No one has any no one has seen God at any time. But if we benefit one another, God's, all right, God abides in us and his agapeo has been perfected or completed in us. Alright. Therefore, what I do is I complete the circle of love. Uh, What's the first commandment? What did they ask? What's the most important commandment? Love God. And the second is similar. Love your neighbor. For me to love God, I have to love you. And you. And you. And you. And you. Do you understand? Now, how can I do that? How can you love the people who mistreat you? How can a, a woman whose husband has left her for an, a, another woman, how can she love him? How can you love a, how can you love a boss who fires you for no reason? A, a brother or sister who despises you because you've become a Christian. 
sepse ju i një bërë i kryshter apo i kryshter. None of us here have within us the ability to love other people that way. Asë një nga ne nuk e ka asësin brënda nesh që të doj personin tjetër. But when we confess our sin, and God is the source of our love, we can love God, but only as we love other people. I cannot love God if I don't love you. Doesn't that make sense? Now, if, at some point, I think, I'm a pretty good guy. I go to church. I read my Bible once in a while. I even went on a mission trip. To teach those heathens over in Romania. Or where was another? Or Greece. Yes. The real bad ones. <laughs> The Serbians. Okay, yeah, yeah. We, and for a moment, I don't confess my sin. The moment that I don't confess my sin, God is no longer the source of my love. Therefore, I am no longer a conduit because God's love has been pinched off. And this person is no longer the object of my love. But I have to find love somewhere. Something has to be the source of my love. So what I'll do is I'll turn this person back into the source of my love. And once again, I will become the object of my love. And then I become the selfish person. Just like the world. And I will not love you unless you treat me right. And I go directly against the commandments of God. So I ask you, as we close. What is the the whole basis of loving other people, loving your enemy. What does it depend on? Confession of my sin. Okay. Turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 18. We'll close with this how many would oh, don't, I won't even ask that it's important one of the rules of, of hermeneutics alright who is being addressed now who is being addressed in verse 9 of Luke 18 Okay, now follow that. Because this has great ramifications for marriage. Jesus says to those that are believe they are self righteous and are critical of other people. When the first thing I do is look at how much I do. The next step is always how little you do. And so when I hear a spouse come in and say, I'm the only one doing all the work, I realize that's a self-righteous person. See, when, when I played in the NHL, I didn't gauge how much I worked. 
un nu mați aveți să punoia or how hard i worked o să sa fort punoia based on how someone how hard someone else was working bazuar nu că ca suar vetën time me personin tjetër i did the most possible i could do un bora më të pamundur që un mund të bëj a That's how a spouse comes into marriage. Edhe kjo është mënyra se si një bashort apo bashorte hyn në martes. I don't base my my work ethic in marriage according to Ruth. Unë nuk e bazoj punën e time në martes nga uh, ajo që far bën Ruthi. Now follow this. Tani ndiqeni këta. Because this is going to hit us between the eyes. Edhe kjo do të magodas fort neve. The first thing the Pharisee does is takes a look at all the bad other people are doing. And he takes he thanks God but he takes credit for what he isn't isn't doing. Then he looks at all the good that he's doing. When you and I are critical of other people, Edhe unë jemi kritikues të njerëzve të tjerë. When we're critical of our spouse. Kur ne kriti, jemi kritikues të bashortëve tona. When we're critical of our pastor. Kur ne kritikojmë pastorin ton. When we're critical of our elders. Ose kur jemi kritikues të pleqve tan. When we're critical of anybody. Kur jemi kritikues të këto personi. It's always birthed in self-righteousness. Kjo e ka lindur nga vetdrejtësia jonë. Critical spirit goes with self-righteousness. Fruma kritikuse gjithmon shkon me vedrecin. Now the Pharisees, they couldn't stand this about Jesus. Tani farisen nuk nja dilnin do të këtë gjën në lidhje me Jezusin. Now the tax collector, Tani tagamlesi, won't even raise his head to the heavens. Ai asqë e ngre së të lartë për të parë nga qieli. But confesses his sin. Por ai rëfen mëkatin e ti. Verse 14 is one of the scariest verses in the New Testament. Vargu 14, pra Luka 18, 14 është një nga vargjet më të frikshme në Biblë. One man is headed for heaven. Një njëri është duke shkuar drejt paraisës. And one man is headed for hell. Edhe një njëri është duke shkuar drejt ferrit. Now in our church today, në kishën e sotme, në ditë e sotme, we would all expect the Pharisee to be the one going to hell. Ne presim që fariseot shkojnë parajs. It's not the person who presents their goodness that Jesus is impressed with. Jezusi nuk nuk i bën për shtypja i personi që tregon sa i mirë që është. It's when we present our need through confession of sin. Por është personi pra që rëfen nevojën e ti për mes rëfimit. God, that is what God desires. Kjo është farë dëshiron për e ndia. So here's something to think and discuss upon lunch and our break. Tani, mendoni për të shka që ne mund të mendojmë edhe të shka që mund të diskutojmë më vonë edhe gjatë kosë të drekës. And you get this. Tani, duhet të kapni këta. You know the only thing worse than an adulterer? E dini që farë është njëri u më, një njëri më kejse se një, një trathar, trath... Do you know the only thing worse than a pedophile? A dini që farësh një person më kejsë sa një pedofil? You know the only thing worse than a thief? A dini që farësh një gjë më kejsë sa sa një hajdut? Hajdut? Is someone who's proud they're not one. Një njëri që është mendje math që nuk është si këta. So when we say, boy, I am glad I'm not like him. Edhe kur ne themi që, o, një jam i lumë të që nuk jam si a i, It's an evidence that we're not going where we think we're going. Është një fakt, një provë që ne nuk po shkojmë atë ku mendojmë ne që po shkojmë. The apostle Paul, apostoli Paul, midway in his in his ministry, në nga në mes të shërbesës së tij, writes to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15:9. Ë shkruan në letrën e parë të Korintës kapitulli 15 vargu 9, and he says, I am the least of all the apostles. Ai thot jam më i vogël në të gjithë apostujt. It's like saying I'm in the hall of fame. Edhe ai thot jam në hallin e famës, but I'm the worst player. Por un jam lojtari më i keq. 5 years later he writes to the church at Ephesus. And he says in Ephesians 3.8 I am the least of all the Christians. He's writing scripture yet he says from the least of the apostles to now the least of all the Christians. Near the end of his life he writes to his apostolic representative Timothy a i shkruan ati për fajsusit apostolik të ti Timoteot and he writes present tense a da i shkruan në kohën e tashme 
I am present tense. The chief of all sinners. When your sin, when my sin, bothers me more than your sin, I am walking to Christ. But when your sin bothers me more than my sin, I am self-righteous and walking away from Christ. That is humility. When my sin bothers me more. And I warn us all. I warn us all. Humility is the one virtue that as soon as you recognize you have it, you've lost it. So instead of talking to each other about how what great feats we've done, uh, how great what? Great. Uh, okay. Uh, Let's talk about what a great forgiving God we serve. Because people are turned off by arrogance. But the world is attracted to humility in Christ. Amen. Amen.